Hey, what's going on everybody? Getting uh, set up here for this live stream. We're gonna be working on this set of four paintings here. We're gonna be getting started in just a moment. I need to update a, let's see, shop live four. At products, those are in. Okay, cool, we got the live products. <clears throat> and updating a couple things right now as we get started so bear with me here uh let's see add a billboard And we're gonna put that right here. Let's see, there's a good spot right there. All right, and we're gonna go live and getting live, getting live. Okay. And welcome going to be talking and jibber-jabbering as we begin this uh, before we dive in. Sometimes it's good to just chat and catch up and see how things are going. So, you know, whether you're viewing from YouTube or TikTok, you're free to share. How are you doing today? Tell us about what's going on in your life. Share a fun fact, whatever, whatever comes to mind. Got a Van Gogh disappearing earmug with me right now. And we see uh, Quincy Chavaria, Donna has joined the room, Joe Myers, Jeff Smith, Chris O'Brien, Anna Lehman. Let's see who else is here. Rena Miller. I'm trying to swipe so I can see all the comments. Uh, so we got plenty of people joining the room. Uh, e and Z, user, user, user. Hope you're all doing fantastic. Which, as I'm watching this right now, it reminds me I need to upload this shirt as a as a purchasable product onto the TikTok store. And we'll do that in a bit. But for now, uh, we're gonna get we're gonna start some painting. How about it? So I have some of my supplies here. By the way, this is fantastic. This easel, I can fit all of this stuff behind on my easel, on one easel. It's like its own workstation. If, you ha or if you're limited on space like I am, or limited to like one room, or like a, like a small room, I'm very fortunate that someone can actually create uh, an entire, basically a studio with just one easel. You can't really see the size of this easel, but it's about, it's about the length of this top to bottom. So it's like you could fit this easel on top of this. It's pretty wild, amazing design. And as I start to get set up here, um, feel free to share. We've got a new painting up here. That's gonna be up and available on the TikTok store in a little bit and my, in the regular shop, but or not the painting itself. Painting itself are, uh, are are sold differently, but uh, the painting and its prints, printed versions of them, will be available soon on the TikTok shop. But here we go. So let's actually get into these paintings. We've got so many things to update. I actually really like this one. This top one is my favorite. I think I put the most like thought into it right from the beginning. But we're actually going to start with the last one that we worked on. So we'll work backwards for this. And it's going to be this one. <coughs> so let's go with a smaller brush this time. And we're still working with a, a filbert here. Uh, we got Ashley Gibson in the room, Miss Martha. What's going on? Thickness 86. All right, great. Tyasia Tyler, Ashley Gibson. What's Hey, thanks for the follow, Ashley. Welcome. Uh, Rachel has joined the room, and 
for those of you here, thank you and welcome. It's great to be able to do this this live painting show for all of you. Uh, streaming and just making videos in general and content is something I've been doing for quite a few years. And, you know, it's so great to finally find a platform like TikTok that if I, if I can do it, if I can, because like so I've made so many YouTube videos, I've literally made thousands of YouTube videos. The first thousand of which basically probably had less than a thousand views, like one view each. So the first thousand got like no views, and to finally discover TikTok, and suddenly you know you're getting like thousands of viewers per per day, uh, per time you stream. It's just just mind blowing, for whatever reason. So I just gotta say. If I can do it, if I've tried that hard on like other platforms like YouTube and TikTok, or uh, sorry, if I've tried that hard on other platforms like YouTube and Instagram, and I can do stuff on TikTok, so can you. So I think this, this brush, it's a really high quality brush, but I failed to clean it properly after my last use. So it's a little bit stuck. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to, trying to loosen it up a little bit. And I might need to... <clears throat> Gather yeah, some of my cleaning supplies. So what I usually use to clean brushes is a master's brush cleaner right here. And a little bit of water goes a long way with this. So I'm going to place this down real quick. Pop open my master's brush cleaner. And it's pretty easy to use. Once you see, you will be amazed. So I have this, this uh, water right here. Got a little bit of a, and obviously, you, and uh, you just dip your brush. As you can tell, this is my this is my paint water. So don't drink it. Put warning labels on it if you have to. It'd be very harmful. Do not drink. And you just needs water, and you just dip it in here. You start swirling it around, and eventually it will clean itself. Especially if you've got a really good brush that's designed for oil painting, it should all pretty much just work out itself. So this already, I can feel it. I can already start to see, like you can start to see it have some give now. And it's just, it's doing its job. Just as you would expect. Now the only time it doesn't do its job is if you use really, really poor quality, uh, poor quality synthetic brushes. Again, there's high quality synthetic brushes and there's low quality synthetic brushes. And if you use very low quality synthetic brushes that are designed for like watercolor, part of the learning curve of, of uh, getting into oil painting is knowing what's like a good quality brush to use, like what you can get away with that's like cheap, but also what you can get away with that's not gonna break down after just a couple of uses. And you know, some cheap brushes that are designed for oil painting, they'll last a while. But what happens is you'll go shopping on YouTube or on Amazon or you go shopping on like an online website. That's, you know, Amazon, anybody can upload products, right? So what I've learned is that what happens is you shop for these products on Amazon and they'll say, hey, you can use this brush, not this brush, like some other brush. Like let me find a brush that has is uh it's like this brush for example right i bought this on amazon it says hey you can use this brush for acrylic watercolor and oil painting but the truth is is that you cannot use all brushes for all three because out of the three oil painting is very rough on your brushes so you know when you're shopping, you really got to learn which brushes are good with oils and which ones are not. And you can waste money that way. But fortunately, the really cheap brushes on Amazon that you can find or like from any online store. Uh, if it's an art store, it'll tell you if it's for oil. But if it's just on Amazon, I mean, fortunately, if you get really cheap brushes, they're cheap and you don't mind losing them. But eventually, you're going to want to invest in the right brushes. I'm not saying the highest quality or the most expensive brushes, but just the right brushes, the correct brushes. And some, some popular stores, Rosemary & Co., I'll just name a couple, Windsor Newton, just make sure that it says an oil painting brush. That's the only, like, 
if any product is saying that this is an acrylic and a watercolor brush and an oil brush, that is your first warning sign that the person trying to sell that product does not know what they're talking about. Because just you just cannot use the same brushes for watercolor that you do for oil. Now you might be able to use oil brushes for watercolor, but there's no reason to because watercolor is such a gentle uh, medium. But anyway, uh, I've cleaned my brushes. They feel ready to go. It's loosened up now. I'm just adding some oil here, dipping it in my oil to just <clears throat> give it a bit of uh, give it that oily effect before we get started. Just want to make it ready. And let's get started. Let's stop talking, or I'll probably keep talking, but I'm gonna get started and keep talking. So. And the reason why that is because uh, TikTok doesn't like it when you don't when you don't talk. So anyway, this is the last part I worked on, and what I want to do here is I want to go in and, and give this cow some detail. So what I can do is just start to paint in some darker areas over this light area. Now, now let's see how this goes. You know, well, we're gonna start to paint in, add some color and more detail to these to this cow cow part cow part. Am I, am I speaking English? To this part of the cow that happens to be its, uh, its, its um, what's it called? Its spots. Its spots. I'm just going to add this detail in here. And we can eventually like change the color and what it looks like. Hey, KR Wright, thanks for the share. Really appreciate you. Tamika Smith. Uh, Drew, Emily Cherry, Meow Sirs 101. And let's see where we can else we can start to add this color in. <clears throat> it's gonna sound really noisy because my door's open, because I'm using oil paints. And oil paints tend to be very rough. Um scent there's a lot of scents that come with oil paints. So you need to have an open environment, an open room that you can actually work out of. And with that said, uh, let's get some details into this cow here. And down here, we're gonna have some detail, and down here. And just giving this cow some details here. Let's see. Right, maybe we can make its tail come down right around here. We're going to give the tail some detail. <coughs> and how's everyone doing today? So KR Wright, you know, thanks for thanks for sharing the live. That is so very helpful to help keep an art channel going because, you know, we know uh, most people probably don't really enjoy watching this, right? Like, you know, when I'm going through... TikTok streams. I want to see like you know somebody rapping a hundred words a minute, rapping people's names, or like you know people doing some like wild and crazy things. But uh, for anyone to be able to sit and wa watch paint dry, uh, I, I just gotta say thank you for that. So anyway, um, you raise cattle and your daughter paints. Hey, that's awesome. So. Is she painting the cattle? Is she painting? Is that is that a subject of interest for your daughter to paint? That sounds like a great opportunity to for any uh, young artist out there to be able to study animals. But you know, it's not not everyone needs to, to paint animals, of course. But that sounds like a cool thing. You can really build a reputation from that. I heard about this really interesting guy from South Carolina. And they called him the chicken man. So he used to like sell these paintings on the street. <clears throat> he used to sell these paintings on the street. And basically he would just put the, paint these crazy looking chickens on like a very long, but narrow uh, canvas. And he would just paint like crazy chickens. Not, not realistic looking. He would just like, you know, something that you can knock out in, in five minutes or less. And he basically painted those. And like now he's famous for it. And they go for like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I think he sold them for like maybe a hundred or two, but like he sell now they go for way more. But anyway, uh, 
it was her first inspiration, but now dogs and Serena, Serena, hey, that's awesome. You know, you move, you move from one, one interest and you explore another. That's, that's great. So that's cool. But yeah, so they call him the chicken man and that's all he did. And that's how he became famous. And he's just this random dude. And I don't think like, he's not famous to where like, you know, he's a celebrity, but he's like locally known in his artwork. Uh, is recognized in, in certain areas. So you know, he's not he's not like life changing famous. He's just no. He's a local local staple of interest for anyone that needs to go look for anyone looking for artwork. So I thought that was cool. And let's see. So this this cow has a horn coming forward. Or I guess a cattle is what I should call it. This cattle. <clears throat> yeah, so very interesting. Um, very interesting guy. And like, you know, instead of a lemonade stand, by the way, I'm not I'm not saying saying how anybody should like help their kids sell art or anything, but I'm right now you're this like idea pops in my head, like, hey, how about instead of a lemonade stand, there was a kid out there with an art stand. That'd be so cool, you know? The cow or steer, most working cattle are steers, not bulls. Well, that's that's pretty interesting. I did not know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's a cow or steer. Most working cattle are steers, not bulls. Okay, cool, yeah. I guess bulls, their their personalities are uh, too... Uh, they're, they're hard to work with, right? That's my guess. I think it's, uh, we need some white onto this cattle right here. So I'm going to add some lighter areas. And here we go. So let's paint in some white into our cattle here. And so I do want to give credit now that, you know, there is somebody joined in on the room here, but hey, Zola Rev, thanks. Uh, so I got these four paintings going on on one. I finally upgraded the size of my canvas. This is a 16 inch by 20 inches. And I, and I found a bunch of drawings that I'm uh, basing on uh, Vincent Van Gogh's, Van Gogh's drawings. So I decided they're all rectangular and thin. So I separated them into four. And I was like, hey, let me just paint all four on one canvas. So that's the painting. They're to breed heifers and cows and steers. They're there for, for work or fruit. Yeah, okay, cool. Good to know. Good to know. learn about farm animals. And, and farm life you know with how do you feed an entire planet you need people to to farm animals how do you feed an entire planet of people eight what are we reaching eight billion people four scenes on one piece oh wow thank you kr yeah just um good references you know good references is Thank you, thank you. Have a good methods of study. So I'm trying to think where this, so this leg needs to be coming out right from underneath here. So we're gonna go right here and and let's paint that in like a hoof. And let's paint like a hoof right there. I don't know if that, I'm just making the word hoof up. We have an actual, person who knows about steers here so a bovine I guess right they're all both considered bovine so I don't know if I'm using the right terms like hoof feet uh, legs I could be using the wrong terms but if we didn't have an expert I would probably just make it up and just call them hoofs but maybe they're they're called different things on different animals who knows Feels different times, different places, different socioeconomic. Yeah. Well, this is totally from a different time. So, that's so. This is uh, these are these four are based on Vincent Van Gogh's drawings. So, of course, eighteen hundreds in late eighteen hundreds, eighteen eighty four, back in Amsterdam. So you can only imagine. I just found out. I was studying one of his pieces the other day, and the modern restaurant wasn't invented until like. 19 something. Oh, let me ask Alexa. Alexa, when was the modern restaurant invented? Oh, 
Alexa, when was the first dining restaurant? Thursday, February 1st, 2024. It was two days. Alexa, when was the first restaurant invented? The first restaurant in the world was opened in Paris in 1765. Oh. The restaurant was founded by a man named Manny, who served food in a casual setting to customers who sat at late tables. This restaurant is considered the predecessor to modern restaurants, as it offered a more relaxed dining experience compared to traditional inns, which focused more on providing lodging and saving for travelers' horses. Alexa, when was the first modern restaurant? The first modern restaurant, according to legend, was opened 250 years ago in Paris by a soup salesman named Boulanger. All right, so I'm wrong. I could have swore I asked Alexa when was the first restaurant, like uh, a couple of weeks ago, and she said it was like 1890, but now she's saying it was 1765. So I don't know what to believe anymore. But yes, this is totally different eras, and you know, I mean, even it, like, but I think some of these. These, uh, these details still hold true, whether it be Amsterdam or, you know, Idaho or Arkansas. Like, you know, you just have like the land and people farming and living their lives. It's the idea of, you know, this lifestyle of farming that uh, I think captures the attention captures a person's attention. I use Alexa to answer everything, but occasionally my girlfriend and I, we love to play this game where we're like, hey, let's let's pick something we both don't know about and try to make up like facts about it. I like to play that game. I don't know if anyone else plays that game. So get what she says, you're wrong, but you really love this piece so much emotion each scene. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. And, you know, of course, also credit to Vincent Van Gogh for creating the initial drawings. <clears throat> and actually, you know, he, so this is piece is called The Sower. This piece is actually also on this t-shirt. So this is based off of Vincent Van Gogh's version of The Sower. And Vincent Van Gogh's version of The Sower is based off of Jean-Francois Millet, who is the original creator of The Sower. So just a fun fact, uh, we got at least three generations of, of sower painters here, so we're drawers, uh, but let's see, so we got this cow here, let's paint in its tail, or this uh, steer, bovine, uh, and we'll paint this body down, maybe add a little bit of shadow into, into the undercarriage, I'm going to call it the undercarriage of the body, I guess, and uh, so you have a question in the scenes, was there windmills then? Love the history. You know, that's a really good question. I don't, I don't, I have, I've, so I've studied his drawings in chronological order and I've gone like through 18, up to 1884. I don't really remember if he did a lot of windmills. I'm sure there was, but, uh, I don't remember a windmill. A lot of churches, but I don't know. Honestly, I can't remember a windmill. He was constantly like painting out and about, so possibly. That's a, that's a really good question because the Dutch are known for the windmills, so I wouldn't be surprised. But I personally have not, uh, as I did these like studies of his work, um, I personally have not noticed whether he did, did a windmill. Lots of churches, bakeries, <clears throat> mines. But so far, no windmills that, that I've also <laughs> worked on. Um, so anyway, let's go into here, get into some of these details, clean this area up. <laughs> we want to tighten up our guy here. So our guy needs to have his arm modified. So his arm's a little long. So let's uh, get some color here. We're going to use a green. He's like a light green. And then this arm needs to go up here.
And let's go ahead and paint through his leg here. Give him some, some highlights around the back of his body. And we're gonna give him some yellow shoes. Getting a phone call, take care, thank you so much. <coughs> I know Amsterdam is definitely known for windmills though. That's, that is for sure. And let's go, let's add some dark spaces into our figure here. We're gonna add the dark areas. But hold on, someone said Bob Ross. I don't wanna, Heather Harris, my goodness. I don't know if you're still here, Heather, but you reminded you of Bob Ross. That's cool, thank you. That is such a compliment for the streamer. Because I think to compare anybody to somebody, a predecessor that was very well known for something that they were doing, it's such a wonderful, wonderful comment. And these arms feel very big. <clears throat> so we're gonna go, we're gonna bring another arm down in the background here. And let's go ahead and make, bring down some of his legs. And we're gonna aim to make some yellow shoes here. We gotta give our person some yellow shoes or some like brown yellow shoes is what we're gonna go for. I use so much paint for every um, detail that I do because it's not just the, it's not just taking the exact paint that I know, I actually have to mix each color individually, which mixing colors sometimes it takes a minute, you know, you gotta, you gotta work it to really find just the right color. So here we are, we're just getting some of the really fine details, finer details, and we're gonna go ahead and work these spaces over and over. I don't know how many times, but we're just gonna keep doing it. And let's get this little highlight along this, this piece right here at the cow. It's a device that is being used to, to move the cow. We need a very shiny object right here. So let's go up. And we're gonna go up, add some color to this handle right there. And let's see, what color do we have here? So this is, let's probably blend this in right here. And add this on top of the houses here. And there we go, adding some good details. Let's paint a little bit of uh, this color into, into the background here. So there's a little bit of separation into what's going on in this background. Just adding some detail to make this look separated, you know? And here we go, so. Make it look like there's stuff in the horizon being built up. And as we do this, here is a, another good color to paint into the cow here. I need to tighten this cow up soon. Let's see. Here. Blending in some different colors. And 
there we go. So, getting some of these colors up. <clears throat> and welcome, EH20. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, EH20. And who else is here? Anyways, we're going to continue on. So we finally painted this cow. What we can do is we can add some of the detail into this tree. Let's finalize this tree in the back background. We're going to use a nice darkened yellow ochre for this. Let's just paint this down. Nice thin tree. And we're going to add some spirals spirals here some more spirals here <coughs> there's probably gonna be another tree right here it's based on the drawing and uh just gently sketching this into the background And here we are. Some type of bridge or something, I don't know what that is. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and add this color. Working on giving this this thing, the pulley part thing, a bit more color to help separate it from the foreground. And I'm gonna clean off clean off that brush for a minute. So B N Marcelino, welcome. Sophie Eunice, welcome. You want to join the live and also be on this live stream streaming as well feel free to you are all welcome so let's see what happens if i invite somebody invite is that possible guest kathy collie hello uh, let's see who does who wants to join who wants to be on this live If you want to be on the live, feel free to say so, and you are totally invited if you're allowed to stream. <clears throat> so anyway, let's um, highlight some of the hands here. I want to add a little bit of highlight to these hands. We just simply add, just add a little bit of color by putting it on top. There we go. <clears throat> so you can tell this person is pushing a cart. And let me add some more detail into the shoe. Use this to detail the shoe. And I want to add color to this, this piece right here. This is supposed to be made out of metal. So it's supposed to be a reflective surface. Which means it doesn't necessarily need to be white, but it at least needs to look different than the rest. Now I wanted to make this video today. There's going to be a joke about how artists see. And it was going to say, <clears throat> like, hey artists, uh, how I used to see white, where everything white is just white. Like the shirt would just be white. The wall would just be white. Obviously, you can see it; it's not totally white, you know. But as artists see, I think uh, color 
the whole idea of color transformation as an artist, you, everything doesn't isn't just white anymore. There's, uh, there's uh, yellows and blues, many shades of gray. It's like the matrix once you start getting into serious art practice. Maybe not even art practice, but just like trying to see color. <clears throat> color details of various objects. So this tire needs a little bit of a shine in the center and then a little bit of a reflection to separate, reflective separation there. And let's see, so this character could use a little bit of a highlight on the hat. Let's see where we can add a highlight. So this highlight right around here And around the back and let's see I'm gonna make it darker darker area but before we do that let's find out where we can highlight maybe highlight around the top of this actually this guy needs a sling so I've totally ignored the sling here So he needs a sling because this is his pouch for for his uh, sowing sowing his seeds. And let's go. Let's go further into detail. Let's lay down some details here. So we're gonna go right around the foot here. Let's create some contrast. Give her a bit of a horse's foot, so we'll fix that later. And then what we need is the shovel. Yeah, give the shovel some color. And this one shovel also needs some color. We're gonna bring in just a little bit of brown. We want to bring in a little bit of brown on top of these buildings because we want it to be too too dark, like black dark. So I think adding just a little bit of detail into these buildings is enough. And then let's just keep going, building this in. And then that's going to go right there. And let's bring in some darker details. Mix our a blue with some black. Let's go into here. worker and then here we go so he's pushing a cart 
They're pushing a cart. Dorothy D453. Hello, welcome. What's going on? You doing all right? Got uh, people who are still here. Let's see. Uh, Leah, Card Queen, Sasha Fierce, Melissa, Rainy, Kitty, Ariana, JV Max Store, Samantha Rendon, Mizu, Sophie. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're feeling engaged. Definitely, if you got questions, if you got comments, you can even troll and you know criticize my work if you like to. That's fine too. You are welcome. I welcome critics. Obviously, don't be creepy, right? Like, don't be creepy about it. Just obviously, the funnier you can make a, a, a criticism, the better. Is a fine art to a roast or a good critique. And not many people can pull it off, I just gotta say. Like, you know, it's not easy to pull off a good roast or critique. And someone that can has a gift. I, I had a this friend, <clears throat> he would always get into like he would always start fights. I don't I don't condone this type of behavior, but he would always start fights at a like a bar but he wouldn't start them with himself he would always start them for other people and it would always be other people would get into these fights but somehow he was always involved but he never actually got into the altercation himself which just blows my mind that I consider a gift. That is a blessing. That is a blessing, people. So anyway, painting out these trees I'm painting them pretty dark right now, just to get an idea of where their their placements. Here's some wild trees. So Justin B. Wamoni, what's going on? A country girl, 69, cat hair and crumbs, hilarious name. Welcome. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all doing fantastic. So let's go ahead and paint this one. Add these darkened details to this these trees. These are some pretty interesting trees with no arms, but they're just like super pokey. They like poke into the air. And we're gonna go ahead and paint into these trees as well. I feel like there's way more arms on these things. <clears throat> and there we go, we've got this like gray color. Maybe this gray color can, we could feed a little of that into there, <clears throat> into there. And let's feed a little bit, bit of this gray color into area around the leg here, around the side, maybe a little underneath, just to create a sense of shadow. I think the hoofs here can be made gray. <clears throat> and I 
Okay, let's clean off this brush for now. And a cat hair and crumbs sit on Scotty Scotty face. Huh. Interesting name. Sit on Scotty face. Alright. So let's go. <clears throat> let's go paint in some of these details that we've somewhat ignored. Back here. And uh, back here. Trying to thin out our figure here in the foreground. Thin them out a little bit. Let's darken. can probably go into this background here, add a little bit of our ochre, <coughs> and paint up into this area. Okay. And what do we need to do? So this hat looks okay. I feel like this background, I'm still concerned about this little, the back that this person has. It just doesn't look right, so I need to, need to update how that looks. What I'm going to do that is just paint into the sky here. Make the area around him blended in. And let's push this forward actually. Let's push some of this green forward a bit. Let's see, how do we do that? Alright, so we're gonna push this green forward to make him disappear a little bit. There we go. Let's bring in some of our dark, dark feature of our pants. He definitely needs to come out a bit more. So it's going to come forward and this is going to come up. Again, this still needs a little bit tightening up, but I think we're getting closer. Actually, this needs to be pushed down a bit, so we're gonna. Okay. Here we go. We've got this like dark color here. So what we can do is we can make this person's hat a little bit darker. And what we can do is, let's see, what can we do right here? Paint in some of these paint details. And let's go right around here. Shuts forward. I really want to get rid of some, some of that yellow space. 
that's coming around these buildings. So what we'll do is gonna add some white into these areas. Let's make sure that we cover this space. Cover up some of the yellow that, that pops through. You know what? You know what I just recently heard? So when Vincent van Gogh was uh, painting, people used to throw rocks at him. Like they thought he was such a weird guy that they would literally throw rocks at him. So pretty, pretty wild stuff there. wild stuff there. Yeah, people would ro throw rocks at him, they would spit on him. It was just, just this bizarre thing where nobody, he, just nobody could like him. Except his brother and like a few other people. But there were definitely people that just did not, you know, treat him right. And it also makes him wonder, is that what drove him to madness, you know? Makes you wonder what drives people to their to their wits. I mean, I don't want to know myself, and you know, I never want to, want, I, I'd hate to have to experience that, but uh, you can only imagine, begin to imagine, you know, all you want to do is Is be a known artist and all you want to do is paint like Vincent did and then suddenly you know they're just people that don't want to let you do that but anyway uh, let's see what color we got we got like this green so let's go ahead and lighten up this person here lighten them up <clears throat> You know what, let's get our detailed drawings back up here. We're gonna go here, and then that's the cow cart. We're gonna get back our detailed drawings real quick so that I can get a good idea of what needs to happen. And let's see, so, he wasn't valued at his time, Leah, hey, oh yeah, my goodness, I didn't have a chance to, to pop over, but yeah, thank you for, for sharing your thoughts about that, totally, yeah, he totally was not, was not very valued at the time. But I think, at the same time, you know, what most people know is that, yeah, they're like the guy, they didn't uh, they didn't buy his paintings, whatever, right? But the truth of the reality is way way worse than people not buying his paintings. He was like he was spit on, he was like accused. An entire town like banded against him to keep him in like an asylum. So I I don't even know what to say there, like what a horrible life. What a horrible life. Mob, a victim of like mob mentality and all sorts of crazy and outrageous stuff. And on one hand, you know, I like to think that people can, you know, change their attitudes and, you know, be more likable. So, like, I feel like some of it, some of it was like, self-inflicted to an extent like you know if you know that you're not a likable person if you know that your attitudes like people don't like to be around you but you really really long for 
friendship, then, you know, at some point you, you got to be like, hey, maybe I should change. Um, but, you know, his, uh, his, his issues in the later years of his life aside, uh, I guess it was just really hard for him. And I don't think people today or people back then had the same type of like, hey, let's all become self-aware and conscious of how we are around others. Let's, you know, be self, self-aware self of how people, how we appear to others. I don't think that was as uh, much of a thing back then. But with that said, he did have some huge struggles. And unfortunately, like, you know, I think I would be a grumpy dude too if I went out and paint and people just threw rocks at me. Like, I wouldn't know who to trust. I'd be like, what the, like, all I want to do is make art and just be out here making stuff and, like, these people are, are throwing rocks at me. There were even, even some of his models, like, made fun of him. So it's just, there's, like, no winning. Imagine living a life where you can't possibly win. That, that, oof, I don't even know. How do you, how do you even begin to contemplate that with, like, Every turn, there's something going bad, right? It's horrible. I feel like that could drive pretty much anybody crazy. <clears throat> like genetic predispositions aside, but it must have been so hard. Yeah. Very rough. I don't know. Very sad. Very rough. It also makes me wonder, like, how is history repeating itself today? What are some ways that... And given that not every artist who is not likable is going to become, like, one of the world's masters. But, you know, it's just like, who out there really wants to just, just do this craft, but isn't really give, being given... That people are just uh, not. I don't really know where I'm going. This sometimes I just ramble, and uh, I forget what I'm, what I'm trying to, trying to get at. But I think I think what I was really trying to get at is like, you know, what are the what are the things that we can do today, that would help, you know, not. Or make us, better people. <clears throat> I guess that's a good way to summarize what I was thinking. Be a good person. There we go. <coughs> that's the message of the day. Be a good person. So anyway, uh, let's see. Right here, got a couple wagon. We got a little wagon wheel going up here. Wagon wheel. Let's make this red. But darken it in the back a little bit. Darken it in the back. So. Leah, how's it going? Uh, what got you? It sounds like you actually did some research. So what uh, what got you interested in the life of Vincent? Or what uh, media have you listened to? Things did you read? So I don't really like how this is being colored right now. So I'm going to add a highlight over it. A little bit of a white light. Blend that in. Get these back wheels here. They're going to come up into a cow. They really need to... Art history in college. That was your major? <clears throat> That's a good major. That's a great major. 
very good one. So are you like a, uh, did you, did you stick with that or did you become an artist or what did you, I was a biology major and I've gone many, many totally different paths since then. I was a biological science major and biological science major turned restaurant food product salesperson turned, uh, actor well like restaurant salesperson turned uh all sorts of stuff tech salesperson turned actor who also does painting and and all that other stuff too but so now adding some details in that i failed to have earlier <clears throat> But the shape of this is bothering me, and I really need to need to update this. But we're gonna improve on this as we go. So, you didn't like that your class major was biology? Oh, <laughs> oh, biology was your favorite class ever. Hey, that's neat. Well, at least you did something with that. At least you did something. I was a biology major, and I really just cannot stand biology. It's all good. So adding some of these details. And let's go up here. Okay. So we got a cow here. Your nurse, welcome. So is this like are are you are you on, on shift now technically? <laughs> Cause it's late. I think I'll, when I when I think of a nurse, I think only people who work at night. Even though I know there's nurses during the day, because how else would a, a a hospital function if there were no nurses during the day? But like, for whatever reason, every nurse I've met always seems to be a nurse who works at night. I never meet like a nurse that works during the day. But I, obviously, it's just a, a bizarre coincidence, but I feel like every every nurse I meet is always at, at night. Minus the nurses that actually take care of me, you know, when I'm in the hospital or whatever. But it just feels like whatever nurse I actually meet in person is usually a uh, nighttime nurse. Work nights, but not tonight. All right, so you get a little break. That's cool. And on, and I am very fortunate because on your, on an evening that you take a break, you decided to take a moment to stop by and talk about art and Vincent Van Gogh. How how awesome is that? I that is so great. And sadly, there are not enough opportunities for all of us to, to find opportunities like this in real life. Which, you know, on one hand, is good because anybody in the world can, can connect with all sorts of people about anything at any time. So, you know, you never really, you're never really without, you know, a conversation. But... I guess physically in person, I wonder, I imagine people can feel as if they're not able to find their, their tribe. And that could be hard. But anyway, um, what, what, what are we doing with this color? I got this green color here. Uh, I'll put it down here. Oh, that, that shouldn't really go there, but that's okay. We're going we're gonna to work it in. Sometimes I get in trouble because I don't know what color is on my brush and I just want to lay it down and play with it. But since I know that's that's a dark a dark color, let's go right here to the, the pew. Go up. Right here and go up. And then we're gonna go up like so. Since this is somewhat brown, we we'll paint it into the trees.
need some I need some better um, brush discipline. So you try painting, but you're not good yet. Ooh, I love that last part. Yes, that is the way to to speak to yourself. <clears throat> that is the way to speak to yourself, for sure. I'm still working on it, you know? I'm still getting better. I'm improving, little by little. I'm getting the hang of it. I'm learning. <clears throat> Not good yet. Not there yet. But you will be, as you put time. That's great. What are you, uh, what are you working on painting? What is, what is like, what are some of the ideas around which you're developing your artistic ideas? For example, you know, one of my projects is studying Vincent Van Gogh's drawings. So I paint his drawings. And then some of the other things I've done is buying a lot of books. I buy way too many books about art. <coughs> But way too many books about art. And I think you can have too many. Although I'm sure some people with really big libraries would disagree, but unless you know you've got a really nice house and you're super settled and you know you got this huge bookcase and you really just get a kick out of like having people show up at your house and you can show them your big bookcase and book collection but I'm not there you know it's not my thing I keep getting distracted of painting stuff that I forget what I wanted to do which is I need white I need to use my whites let's use some of this white up and paint into our cow so we need this cow to look like a cow. And let's paint over some of these areas. Ooh, that's a good white. Very nice, crisp white. That will add a lot of detail into our figure. It didn't show up like this before. I know why, because I was using a muddied white before. Painting around into our cow, adding some details, slowly building them up. Hope everybody can see this. Building up these details little by little. And let's give the ears some detail here. And then there's a horn that comes out there. And we're gonna add this color into the cow on the bottom or the steer, or whatever you wanna call it. So this steer is gonna have a body that comes down like so. And then we're gonna have the legs come down. Come down. And thanks so much, art not R. Looking good, you like landscapes. You think incorporating the Fibonacci principle into art is so creative. Yeah, Fibonacci. Yes, so you're talking like, are you talking about like the golden spiral or are you talking like the idea of like one, one, two, one, 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 two. Golden spiral, I, I try to like, I spend a lot of time just thinking about the golden spiral. That's one of my last projects or my recent projects is uh, <clears throat> was about oh yeah so that's what I try to do this project up here on I don't know if you can see it but let me try to let me try to paint the picture here so I started at this corner or no, I started at this corner and I went up to that corner oh no uh, I started this corner and I try to go up and then do the golden spiral like around 
and then, you know, try to golden spiral it around, and then just like that. So that was my attempt here, is golden spiraling it around, and then coming around and forward like that. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. But great that you can, when you can think about those things and, you know, ultimately try to include them in your projects. I'm trying to think. So this body needs to come out way forward, way more forward here. There we go. All right. So let's get our cow body a little bit tightened up here. It's looking a little bit funky, almost more like a cow or a pig rather than a cow. So it's looking a little funky, but we're going to fix that hopefully right now as we start to add in some details of its head and face and uh, legs here. I think we've gotten the body to where it looks okay. Yeah, there we go. This body's not too bad. Uh, here we go. That up. And yeah, I look forward to seeing your landscapes. I don't know. If, do you care to do you care to stream? If I invite you to live stream, will you share some of your paintings or some of your artwork? I know I know some people are camera shy, so I totally understand that. <clears throat> Let's see. I'll just I'll just send the invite. Or you can like just show your paintings, but you don't have to like show yourself, obviously. Let me see, I'll send an invite and you could turn it down or whatever. I think people are, are tired of watching my paint dry here. Because that's what this almost feels like is watching paint dry. Because I tend to work a little slowly uh, for these for these larger pieces because it starts to get complex because you're like, hey, what do I do next? What do I do now? Or this is like, it could get really complicated. So I work much slower. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. All right. These, these cows have enough attention. Let's go into here. Let's see if this color. That's an okay color. All right, Atlanta hairstylist. Hey, we got a hairstylist in here, a hair artist. When I started painting eyebrows on people for like my portraits, I really came to start appreciating eyebrow artists, speaking of hair, because like if you're off on a portrait with an eyebrow or any like hair by like one millimeter or, or like two millimeters and your portrait is totally jacked up, like everything looks off, the entire face just looks like what the heck is wrong. And you can't figure it out, but you know, you, deep down, you know that it's because that painting a face, you have to be so accurate. If you, I mean, if you're trying to go for like exact replication, right? But if you're going for exact replication, you just know deep down that the reason why your portrait doesn't look right, if you're just honest with yourself, is because you painted one or two or more details that are literally just off by a tiny bit. Not even a lot, just a tiny bit. And the only way to fix it is literally to, to go back into it and be truthful with yourself and just say, hey, the way I painted this is off by just a little bit. And that's the challenge of, of painting faces is anything weird. Uh, People are so good at recognizing faces and facial detection that anything wrong by just a tiny bit isn't just a, 
a small deal. It's a re ends up being a big deal. That's why I don't go for realism for the most part. <coughs> I'll leave that for the uh, super technical artists. Who has ever seen a sun... I don't think I've ever seen a sun look like that. It's a circle. Let's see. Oh yeah, let's add some white into that area. Okay, so into here, we tighten up our, our area. These are some white houses. go. These houses are okay in the back. Might be a little too white. So I'm going to paint in a little bit of an off gray blue, blue off gray color. Let's see who's here. Mar Marie, welcome. Marie, hello. And we're going to paint in, let's say, let's say the shadows are on that side of the building, so this this house can probably use a little bit of this color. Right, we'll go with a little bit of a off blue. And what should we do? What should we do? Let's actually add some of this into here. We can give it, give it a little extra pop into our device here. Actually, we could use this as a, probably a shadow color. So add some cool shadows. There we go. Add some cool shadows into our cow down here, into the white spaces where there's going to be shadow. So this back leg is probably going to be a little darker. So we can add that into this back leg. And. This one's gonna have a horn that comes around. So this horn's gonna come like so. I'm gonna paint the bottom of the face a little bit darker. <clears throat> and we are coming along slowly. Hallie, Haley, Hallie, Holly, Haley, Holly, Hallie, welcome. Haley, Holly. Holly, Haley. All right, let's go here. Well, we're going to paint across. I want to make sure that I can add 
tighten up this corner here. <coughs> Let's go with some more green again. One thing about painting the way that I paint, which is a bit disorganized, especially doing a project like this, is that it can be easy to, for, to forget what colors you use unless you have a good organization system. Now for the perfectionist, I think that that sounds ridiculous because the perfectionist cannot stand things that do not look exactly right. But fortunately my personality uh, works well with my type of style of painting. Otherwise, if it didn't work well, I wouldn't be able to tolerate it. And uh, I have the opportunity to create different types of stuff. Things that look a little different. Okay, so yeah, doing four paintings at once, they're, they're all, as you can tell, they're all painted pretty differently, right? So I wanted to do something like a bit rougher in the skies here, darker skies, getting lighter and lighter as we go down. And I really wanted to create that like little transition of different types of, uh, different times of day, different times of night. And with that, the challenge there is also that you have to be comfortable. You have to either have like a very good organization system of all your colors, or you have to be very comfortable making colors Or, just got to be very comfortable with uh, being uncomfortable. I don't know if that made sense. But what I meant by that, like being uncomfortable with being, being comfortable with being uncomfortable is, uh, you know, you're going to be like, oh, what color did I just have here? I can't find it on my palette. And then, you know, I guess you're either going to freak out or you're going to be like, okay, I can make this color a different way. Or, you know, I can find a way to blend this in with the rest of the area around here. This leg actually needs to go in a lot more. Yeah, I forgot about a foot. It's almost like a horse's foot. I want to fix that up just a little bit. She does not need a horse's foot.
think we have tightened him up quite a bit now. Kiara Salayandia. Salayandia. Hello, welcome. How nice of you to join us today on this Sunday evening. I guess school's tomorrow. I don't know how many people here still go to school, but I'm sure some people. And here we go. Huh. I just got a notification. But I have no clue what that notification is about. Let's see, what's it say? What is that notification? That's so weird. A uh, share? Was it a share? Anyway. I'll have to find out for next time, but... All right, let's go. I want to brighten up these shoes just to help them stand out a bit more. So probably need a little bit more white here. And let's go. Oh yeah, right back here it needs to go in a bit more. So let's go like so. And this area. This color can this collar can go up quite a bit more. So let's go bring this collar up. This collar is gonna come right around here. And his neck's gonna be much smaller. We're gonna smaller, make this neck a bit smaller. Make his shoulder come up. more of an angle. <clears throat> and let's see how this works. This color could still come up even more back here. Jason Button, Dez, just joined the room. Welcome, Jason Button. Welcome, Dez. How are all of you doing today? Hope the answer is fantastic. If it's not fantastic, that's okay, too. We can't all have good days every day. It's probably very difficult to have good days for seven, even seven days straight in a row. <coughs> But if you do, more power to you. And I'm trying to decide like what needs to happen here. There's some details that uh, look a bit off. I'm feeling not so good about. And I think it's probably having to do with how this face is cut in. 
I'm gonna work on cutting the spaces a bit better. Let's bring this down at an angle. Getting rid of an annoying cough lately. That feels a little better, but not yet. Still something off. Hat needs to come down a bit more. I think that's it. I think that's where we can rest our issue. Okay. It's looking all right. This lady's hat needs to come a bit forward. It's got good shape over here, but needs some more forward shape. And then this guy's hat needs some improving. It needs a brim. It needs a brim to his hat. That's some really interesting hats back then. Let's tighten up the area around the neck here. <coughs> and now, we're gonna create some shadow. Let's get some shadow into the back of these pants. And big guap, big guap, welcome. I don't know, what's a, what is that? What is a big guap? Guap hole. All right, let's see. I feel like we can actually start going into even, even smaller brush now. Actually, I want to figure out this piece right here. That needs a little bit of a, not just a little bit, it needs a lot more shadow and a lot more highlight. So let's actually add our highlights to this baby. This is a bit confusing, but we're going to set our standard right here. Object right there. Right. Let's use another dark color. Go across here is like an axle. It goes across. You almost have to be like mechanical to. Very 
helps to be a bit more mechanical. Try and paint some of these things. They're not absolutely necessary. <coughs> Let's go ahead and paint through. <coughs> You're sure now if you like. <clears throat> Alright, that's cool. Yeah, hey, you're welcome. You are welcome to continue showing the art that you'd love to share. So you are invited. Anybody who wants to promote, like, by the way, anybody who wants to promote their art, share their work uh, on my live streams. I don't know if you're going to be here in the future if you're watching now, but you're very welcome to just say the word. Just don't be, just don't be creepy person. I've had so many people want to join on the live and they're just like super unusual. Like they don't even talk and they just sit there and stare at the screen. That that bothers me. But, you know. Okay, let me turn on my volume, by the way. I don't have my volume up. Let me see. Uh, are, you, are you speaking? Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Cool. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know how to get the video to show. Oh, uh, I'm sure to come up. Hmm. Do you see any buttons anywhere? Uh, Are there any buttons on your screen? I've actually never been on someone else's live, so I don't know the exact, uh, there's got to be like a video camera button or a or some something else. Yeah. You see it? I hit the video camera button, but it's not doing anything. Maybe I don't have enough followers or something. That's. But you. What happens when you press the button? Nothing. Oh. Yeah, I, I have heard that some people you need a thousand followers in order to, um, I have less than a thousand actually, but I was able to do it, and I think that's because, um, I set up as a creator account, so I don't know if that helps you. Oh, okay, maybe that's it. Yeah. Uh, for a while I had, uh, over a thousand, but then I was off the app for a while, so it dwindled down. Oh, uh... Yeah. Then I changed phones, which uh, I, it didn't carry over, unfortunately. Oh, yikes. Um, All right. Well, uh, thanks well, for, for jumping on. And, you know, how about how about describing the work that you do? Well, I, I did one in uh, oil, and I did it with another, uh, I took an art class. Yeah. And I did it in the class and it turned out really nice i really like it um nice and nice. then I've, I've tried other mediums uh mainly acrylic just because uh, of the having to clean the brushes and the yeah. smells and all that yeah uh and the, the work that it just it seems more time consuming and totally is and everything but so mainly it's been uh, acrylic and a little bit of watercolor. Okay, cool. And landscapes, you said, right? Landscapes? That's your thing? Yeah, uh, uh, mainly uh, landscapes and flowers. Very nice. All right. So are you, are you like selling them or do you have a store or do you just... Oh, no. I'm just... Uh, done only like six or seven and uh, I haven't tried to sell them or anything um, just for my own um, I, I just like doing it it's a creative it's an outlet you know yeah cool are you selling yours yeah so um, so I do have like, you know, I do some of my originals and stuff. I just sold one actually a couple days ago. That was very fortunate. Um, but, uh, more so, I think it's amazing that TikTok 
Hello? Oh, hey, I'm, record I'm streaming. It's funny enough. Oh, yes, yeah, so I think it's amazing for TikToks. I finally figured out how to upload, uh, like, prints and stuff. Like, prints. I don't know if you guys should see it on my screen, like, this, this little picture oh, yeah. here. Like, that's a I print. It. It's a canvas that's print. Nice. nice. I love that. That's really good. Okay, I'll get rid of that. Oh, yeah, so... So it's hard for non-artists to live with artists because there's paint that gets on everything. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So there's. So I finally figured out how to like upload my my like various art prints and everything onto the store on TikTok. The TikTok is amazing for that. That's cool. Yeah, but the reason why I share that is because like if you feel as if you have to, you don't necessarily even have to just sell the painting anymore. You know, you can just figure out setting up a store on Redbubble, which is what I do, and you just sub prints, and you can, that's, that's pretty easy to do digitally. So I've sold some prints like, uh, um, t-shirts, t-shirts, uh, postcard, like gift cards, not gift cards, what are they called, um, greeting cards. So yeah. Nice. <clears throat> Yeah. It's pretty neat. Did I ask for your what are you in California or Yeah, we're in, we are in California. Cool. Yeah. Is that what made you what made you ask? Oh uh, it uh you were in a t shirt. <laughs> oh <laughs> it's warm out that way. <laughs> yeah, so my so that's also what's good about living out here is that the weather uh, it's conducive, so I have to keep stay by an open door, so the yeah, weather is conducive. Keep the windows open and let it breathe. That's good. Yeah, exactly. So that's very lucky, and I guess in other states, you, I, you, not everyone has that opportunity. So. Yeah, I'm in uh, Central Texas, so it's uh, it's it's usually pretty mild here, but but not quite as mild as California. Especially Southern California. <laughs> yeah, but also this shirt. Uh, so this shirt, I haven't uploaded it to TikTok yet, but after I saw myself wearing it today, I was like, I need to. I got to do yeah, that. Yeah, you do. It's, it's very nice. I love, I love the colors. And yeah, thanks. Oh, so I don't, know, I don't know if you were here, but this is the sewer. So Vincent Van Gogh did these studies of a person called the sower. Did I mention that to you, or was that somebody else? I, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't catch that. I was on a phone call for a bit. So. Oh, it was pretty neat because uh, Vincent Van Gogh was a big fan of a artist by the name of Jean Francois Millet, and he like studied his art like crazy. And one of the famous characters that Jean-Francois Millet created was called the sower and it's basically this guy in this exact same pose so this whole painting project here is based on Vincent van Gogh's drawings so Vincent van Gogh developed this character after Millet and he drew this like hundreds of times maybe less than a hundred but like he drew it over and over and over and uh I've had the opportunity to, to make this. So this is actually inspired by that same character. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, except he goes to Hollywood. So it's titled, The Sower Goes to Hollywood. Cool. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, I look for, I don't know if you share your, your uh, art on your page, but I will definitely check out some of your paintings. Oh, I don't, I don't have a... Anything yet. Oh, okay. Hey, no worries. But that's a good idea. I can take pictures and post them on the page. That'd be a good idea. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I feel like, you know, it's definitely something artists should. I know, I, like, it could get overwhelming. Yeah, it could definitely get overwhelming all the posting that you can do, but, you know, it's. It's part of the game, and you know you can reach more people than ever. So I think that's pretty amazing. Something to be be glad about. 
But anyway, working through our cow here. And interestingly enough, I guess the Grammys are on. <coughs> the biggest event in television right now. <coughs> Are you wa watching the Grammys? You probably aren't watching the Grammys since you're watching this. Yeah, no, I'm quite watching TV a while now. I'm just got tired of it. I, I got tired of wasting too much time in front of it, so. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you, very cool. And you're probably busy being a nurse. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's a very time consuming job for sure. Yeah, but it's rewarding. I, I enjoy it. Uh huh. It probably takes takes a lot of energy and everything. Yeah. But you, you make it through. That's awesome. And and then you find time to paint. Yeah. <laughs> very, awesome. very great. Alright, so do you do you have to work on a Monday morning? Yes. You do? do. Uh-oh. Alright, well, I think it's like Texas time. It's like 9 o'clock. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's about time for me to get off. Yes. Alright, yeah, hey, TikTok definitely uh, keeps a lot of people engaged in it, but... But with that, you know, feel. F I hope you have a great uh, day in the office tomorrow. Thank you. All right, thanks for stopping by. Or yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good night. Yeah. Take care. See you, Leah. Okay. Bye. Who's Joni Mitchell? Protest songs? songs? Sounds like a protest song. Yeah. <coughs> oh, she did, with, did songs with Bob Dylan, huh? That's pretty neat. Sounds like fun. Flash flood warning until 12 a.m. Alright, cool. Yay, Joni Mitchell. Yay for Joni Mitchell. Alright, let's get... Oh my goodness. So there's no house here. That's just a, uh, this is just some decoration to fill the space here. So this doesn't need to be as distinct. Here. 
you absolutely nothing on a Christian beach. But you have everything the island has to offer. How about calling this all day school destination at Grand Bahama? Um, all right. And let's see. Here we go. We got Bugs Girl, Bucko, Derby King, Meat King. Welcome every all those all these kings and queens joining the room. Hello and welcome. This this painting at the bottom is like, eh, it's not really doing it for me, honestly. Trying to figure out what it is. Maybe I just need to get into the finer details. And So four paintings coming along. <clears throat> Definitely as we build in these details, finding the right balance. Um, There's a powerful storm coming through. Wow. So many flash flood and, and horrible weather warnings right now. Hope everybody stays safe. It's so wild because California is known to be a dry, very dry state. Or, or Southern California is known for, for like droughts and dry weather. But suddenly... Just over these past few years, there's all these uh, emergencies, flash floods, mini hurricanes. Add a little bit of gray. Into our house here. So let's paint over with a little bit of gray. Interesting to think that like, if you're like a very popular, li very popular live streamer, and you watch TV, that basically the TV also gets free advertising. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> so here we go. Utopia. That's cool. Travis Scott's talking about Utopia. I like that idea. Utopia. Huh? I liked him, but I don't like what he did. What did he do? He didn't notice that people were being trampled to death. Constantly. Oh. You know, it's happening right through me. So he didn't stop the problem. He asked people to stop moving. Did you hear about that? No, I heard about it. I didn't, I didn't know that was him, though. Well, he's, I guess, I guess they deemed it wasn't his fault. No, but you got tiny boots on his trying to stop what was happening. He had the power, he didn't have the stage, he had the mind. Well, he's, obviously nothing, nothing happened to him. Obviously what? Nothing happened to him. Yeah, I, I hear you, but I'm saying that, you know, obviously the industry didn't care about it. Huh? Well, obviously they didn't care enough because he's in the Grammys right now. Chris Brown was forgiven too, which is worse. Was he in the Grammys? Of course. I don't know. You got to choose who you support. So you're watching it right now. You're supporting him. If you don't support them, turn it off. It won't make an impact, but you know, you, you stand for what you want to stand for, right? It's a simple action. <clears throat> Okay, so you know, don't say you don't like like what he did. It's like, I can say whatever I want to say. Huh? I can say whatever I want to say. Right. Well, like you're not, you're not, your actions are not reflecting your beliefs. What is That's my what belief? I'm saying. Whatever you said, you said that you don't like what he did. He allowed people to get trampled. Right. Okay. It's not a belief. But if you don't support that, then you shouldn't support them. But if you do support it, go for it. I'm not... Like I'm saying Peter. I just want to watch it. Okay. All right. I have nothing against him. I mean, it wasn't his fault. It's my opinion. Figures here. Let's go right here. What? There's a storm brewing. And let's go here. 
this guy needs some darker shoes. Actually, his shoes look okay. Let's go around his body, cover up this orange. This bottom one is just not working for me. I don't know what it is. And it just so happens that this is the most interesting, like, painting, <clears throat> most interesting drawing of the four. But anyway, uh, Aaliyah, that girl don't play. Hello and welcome. And here we go. So we still need a nice dark inner circle in here. that she's back at it. Yeah. Alright, let's see what else. This bottom one is just not connecting for him. Road Rush Nation, welcome. Susie underscore Ga. And I think this blue is a little too distracting, but you know what? That's not, that's not too bad. I met this one lady who said she, she's, she's never shopped at a Walmart her entire life because she didn't like how they affected small businesses. But you know what's funny is that uh, I think that's easier in California because there's less Walmarts out here. Whereas if you live outside of California... Walmarts are much more prevalent. Walmarts are the place to hang out. South Carolina, in the country, people would go to Walmart, go to the lawn chair department, buy the following lawn chairs, and they'd set up a camp and they'd hang out and talk. Oh, yeah? yeah. Really? It's a social thing of bumps and stuff. And you did that? I did not. Melissa lived there and she told me about it. Oh. Oh yeah, is it airy? Probably air too. They don't um, spend a lot of time. Thank you. 
Thomas Kanye. Kanye. Kanye? 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 That's cool. Alright. I like that name. Kanye. Kanye. Is Canadian. Figure this out as far as That's a nice message. It's such a pleasant message. Okay. Got some light slowly coming through.
Actually, we could probably add this, add a bit more of this, huh? Add a little bit more of this light. Let's figure out how to define all of this much even better. So we got Aid, Adrian, what's going on? I feel like I haven't been conversing with the with the room as much. It's been a few hours of streaming today, so I'm gonna try to get back. How's everyone doing tonight? Hope you're all fantastic. Is anybody watching the Grammys? You know the Grammys are on. <clears throat> Got Aid Adrian, let's welcome again. I think I think the Grammys has right now has more commercials than it has actual Grammys. For every thirty seconds of uh, Grammys, there's like two minutes of commercial commercial time. Pretty wild, huh? <clears throat> Not even two minutes, probably like five minutes of commercial time. Pretty interesting where where TV is at now. So let's do this. Uh, what are we gonna do? We need to tighten up this area so we're gonna add some more add some oranges some yellows Add some of this red yellow into this. out some of these dark green areas here. There's some, you can actually go around the front of this leg too. We can go around this leg as well. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're starting to add some outlines around our figures here. And I think that's one thing unique with uh, Van Gogh's work that you don't really find in a lot of modern work is outlines. I think a lot of artists are scared to use outlines because outlines are considered like... Huh? Right, yeah. You can't use outlines. I think that's modern wisdom. But... They told you outlines was cheating? I don't think so. I never heard outlines is cheating, I just heard it doesn't look as as artistic or whatever. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna use outlines. But I have been told not to use outlines. Paint in some better details on these cows. Okay. Uh, Jules was here. Hey, Jules was here. What a great name because now everybody knows Jules was here. So Jules was here. In fact, I can tell all my friends about it. So here we go. Let's go with this shoe right here. Gotta add a hoof. There's another hoof that just disappears. And we're gonna have. Another hook right here, and another hook. And here we go. So we continue building up that. Bon Jovi. 
Bon Jovi? Is that Bon Jovi, Bon Jovi, or is that somebody else? Wow. After the show, he's stepping down. Wow. Best new artist. And then let's go paint this down and give him a little bit more of an ankle. There we go. Okay, let's do this. Uh, this leg's gonna come forward. We're gonna bring this down. And here we go. I think that's starting to look more like cow like. <clears throat> we could probably. Push this up a bit. Push this over. And there we go. Okay. Might actually use some more of this green right here just to get in. So here we go, painting in <clears throat> some more of these areas. We have so much time to like, you work these pieces endlessly. So we're going to push this leg up back here. So we want to push this, these legs up in the back. They're going to be in shadow, so it's okay if they're a little darker. Making some progress. Okay. 
Now let's go with some more white. She has a very old Hollywood voice. Yeah. Huh? Some dark, dark color here. And we're gonna go create a mouth. And let's go here. We need the eye. For the cow, getting some some finer details here. And then let's give <coughs> some outline to these horns, cow horns, and cow ears. Actually, this needs some details, so we're gonna go around. This cow's definitely getting a bit more detail now. Keen coverage. This 
Let's go. <clears throat> we can actually start to add in some sh shadow as we go across the front of this body to give it some shape. And let's go around this side. Street in the Grammys. That's cool. Adding in these outlines that art schools tell you not to do. Huh? No, because I've definitely heard it before, so. I'm sure there's teachers, you know, just thinking about how slow things are to change. I'm sure the teachers still say that stuff. Imagine having Meryl Streep present you the yeah. your award. That's cool. Oh, it's my turn. Yeah. Mm.
like how she's trying to be relat relatable. Well, she's like trying to downplay the Grammy, but not downplay it. Like it's like a interesting, you know, trying to, they're trying to be like everybody special, you know, like. I can buy myself flowers. And what's the rest of the song? I can buy myself flowers, put my hair. In. Tie my hair in a bun? What? Yeah. That's some ramen. Oh, yeah. I like that. Is that Ulu made it? to buy one.
Oh, this TV. It's not for the sound. Jeez. Face feels like it's burning from some of the some of the uh Yeah. Inside of my cheeks. Alright, let's see. What color should birds be? They should be blue. Should have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, red, green, red and yellow, red and blue make purple. So let's do that, red and blue. Purple birds amongst the yellow sky. All the commercials. I wonder what people at the Grammys do during commercial breaks. I bet they. I guess they just talk to each other, huh? Huh? Well, my, I mean, if you had to guess, they'd probably just talk to each other, right? Huh? What's going on, AMV? Hey. Look how you have come along. It's coming along nicely. Hey, thanks, KR Right. Yes. Still working on this as we watch the Grammys. We're definitely listening to the Grammys in the background and everything. So, just working on adding some of the birds, adding some of these bird details. And thanks for tuning back in. Thanks for stopping by again. That's really... That is... Uh, Especially during the Grammys, you know, like whenever like there's a big event on TV, obviously the Grammys is probably the biggest event on the planet right now, and to be able to have viewers on tune into this, uh, to my painting, I feel very blessed for that, very grateful for that. <laughs> huh? What do you mean? Yeah, but if someone can watch it right now, if they're watching this, they can watch, if they're watching me stream, they can watch it right now. So I'm just saying that I feel very grateful for anyone that tunes into this. And that gives me great joy to present a Grammy award that has the
keep going on some of these little birdies here. I can buy myself flowers. Da -da 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 -da. Miley Cyrus won an award. Yeah, she's huh? She's presenting. Oh, who won the award? Taylor Swift. Taylor. Taylor Swift. Kanye. <laughs> Kanye? Yes. What did he do? He like... He like said somebody else should be winning this yeah. year? Who, who, who did he say? Oh, Beyonce. Yeah, I remember that. I should have went to Beyonce this year. That's hilarious. Kanye's a funny guy. It's not, you know, he's not popular anymore, but... I mean, I guess he's still this popular, huh? Lucky for him, he became famous before those mental issues started coming out. <clears throat> huh? She's always been weird. Yeah, but... I think for the... If you're able to get famous before your mental issues really start to get, get, get on people's nerves. <laughs> Oh, you did? Cool, yeah. That's cool. Legacy. Oh, Lana Del Rey is awesome. Definitely America's, one of America's uh, greatest cultural, uh, what? Right. But that also makes her one of great America's greatest cultural assets. See, this is brush that I got from Michaels that they, they're getting me to do a review on. And it's this brush. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to make some lines with it. Trees are seriously ugly.
dive from. Ooh, yeah, that was heavy. Okay, so we're gonna do some more birds. Just needs more birds. More birds. So many birds here today. Drawing birds is quite easy. All right, Sting has joined. Welcome, Sting. What's going on? And let's see what we're going to do. We need to bring some tree into this, make this more tree-like. Let's get some more more paint into this. It's called Pine, H-A-I-N. What is? The girl band that opened her concert, and they were also in the video as the evil stepsisters. Uh -oh. There's three of them, and they're a group. <coughs> Cool. And that's who you got to meet when you did the. Nice. Oh, you were standing up for Lord Dern, right? That's right. Not Taylor. Really? Some birds, all these birds all around, just sitting, waiting. You have too many birds, and I think we're starting to get some final details into this. Oh, Augur's Audio Cult. Hey, I don't know if you're still here, but I was able to get one of your songs on my Instagram, but I couldn't find any of your songs on TikTok. <clears throat> So I did have one of my recent projects. I used your audio clips on my uh, Instagram video, but not on TikTok. Just thought I'd let you know because I can't find them on TikTok, unfortunately. But hopefully you reach that point soon so that I can put one of your songs on it. That will be awesome. One day. But I was so glad when I found it on TikTok and I could put it on TikTok. So that said... We're actually wrapping up soon because it's 8. Oh, I guess it's still pretty early. I think I could go for a little bit longer. It's only been a few hours today. I just want to at least... I think this looks better and better, although just the overall design of it just doesn't feel right for some reason. <coughs> it's like too green. This like pastel green just isn't doing it for me. Like all these wooded colors and then suddenly this like lush, lush off green. What's going on? What I think it needs to happen is it needs some red. Some red and yellow. Let's paint in these reds and ochres here. I'm gonna go ochres. See what this brush can do. A little bit of red, and then some red.
bro, and double checked, and the tunes are on TikTok. Hey, uh, yeah, dude, I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to look again, because for whatever reason, uh, yeah, for whatever reason, I couldn't find, find it on, uh, on TikTok. So I guess I'll look again when I upload this today. But maybe it's just uh, harder to find for whatever reason. But yeah, thank you about the, the painting. Grammys are on right now, so I'm actually not watching it anymore, but <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to play with this scenery because I don't like how green it is. We're really, really messing and experimenting with this right here. And thanks so much. Basically painting over the green, <coughs> creating something a little bit different here. I don't even think that's working either. My goodness. What should I do? Finding the right colors. I just have to paint over this all together and just figure it out later. I'm also probably using the wrong brush. This is a very thin brush and I need to be using, in order to keep the feel, I should be using a much brushier brush overall but that's okay let's let's stick with this for now yeah this bottom one just isn't doing it for me but I'm gonna take a break for now before I keep pushing this any further and dig myself into a bigger hole on this bottom piece actually you know what? it doesn't look that bad when I look at it on camera like when I see it on camera it sort of makes sense but not really like my goal is to just at least make this the space make sense. So if I can merge this, if I can merge it, let's try to merge this area right now. If I can successfully merge these two spaces. these two spaces we might have something but all right we're gonna take a break as I mentioned earlier gone for about three hours now and starting to reach a point you know I know when I need to stop because I start re I reached this point where I like start looking at everything I'm like okay it's hard to find things I need to fix I also start getting lazy like oh I don't want to fix that or I don't want to fix that want to do something else but I might even be able to paint over a different painting that I have that I don't really want to work on but you know what we're gonna take a break let's uh stop procrastinating and just say that we'll take a break but those of you that are here we're gonna wrap up in a, in a moment 
I do want to say thank you for being here. And as we wrap up, I don't know, what are, what are some good words of wisdom to wrap up the day? What's, what are some people dealing with today? And it's a Sunday. And tomorrow is a, a day for to get back to work for most people. And you know, if you can start your week strong, you can set your set the standard that you're going to have for yourself for the rest of the week. And I know it can be hard to go in on a Monday morning, depending on how much you like your job. But as we do these things, you know, just remember that you've always got TikTok to come back to. No, just kidding. That's not very unmotivational at all, right? That's not very inspiring at all. Or is it? I don't know. I think we live in a good time. Just think about the time that we live in when <clears throat> no matter what type of business you want to start or what type of life you want to live, most of it is, is pretty within reach. And as, uh, as Miley Cyrus says, you might not be able to win. Not everyone's going to win a Grammy. But uh, everyone is special, so I just I just took uh, Miley Cyrus's words and quoted her. She's a very quotable person. And yeah, I guess we're gonna wrap up with Miley Cyrus's word. I'm gonna quote Miley Cyrus from our Grammys award today. Not everyone's gonna win a Grammy, but everybody is special. So happy Sunday, everybody. And we're gonna call today a wrap up. We'll call this a wrap up for the night. <coughs> Thank you for tuning in.